something this guy flew last night last minute all the way from California to Texas and then we drove like 21 or something hours um, from there all the way to like Southern what California it? Wait, what time is it right now? Hold on. it's 9 o'clock and you flew in at 11:55 last night so 21 hours yeah 21 hours that 21 we hours dude beast mode marathoning it all the way out here La so. savage. <laughs> Anyway, I'm happy to be parked and not drive anymore. So, um, I'll see you guys in the morning and I'll explain uh, what's going on. That sounds awesome. Or maybe in a minute when we get in there and talk to Kenny. Hey! Hey! And on this episode of MTV Cribs, we have the house with the loud dogs. <laughs> what's up, Kenny? Hey, dude. Give me a hug. You gotta meet Mama Roach now. Okay, so I gotta explain a few things. Uh, I went on that road trip to California and I didn't really get to explain why and then I didn't film anything after those couple clips of you know us arriving at Ken's Race Engines. <clears throat> so basically this is what happened. It was, let's see, Wednesday, Wednesday afternoon. I had planned on taking a road trip with my little smart car out to California. Uh, my dad's car just got T-boned and he was just out of a car for a minute and you know he'll probably get another car soon but just for the next little bit maybe a month or so whatever I just drove it out there so he could have it right now he's not without a car so I drove my car out there well that was the plan anyway but then last minute if y'all got friends like this you gotta keep these friends like around because not everybody would do this it's kind of crazy so uh, John who is Ken's brother, and Ken is the one with Ken's race engines. You guys see their logo at the beginning of all my videos. We're not really like affiliated business-wise at all, but they do great work, and they're some of the best guys I know. So John from Ken's race engines flew in. Like he heard that I was driving by myself and didn't want to let me drive 21 hours in a little smart car like through crazy territory by myself. So he flew in like on a whim, like Wednesday, he's like, hey, what are you doing? I said, I'm getting ready to drive out. And he said, oh, I'll just fly in and help you drive. And I'm like, you're gonna fly from LAX to Austin, get in a car and drive back to LA? You're crazy. And uh, he's like, yeah, I'll see you in a few hours. Pack everything and be ready. Pick me up at like 11.55 at the airport. So that's what I did. I went to the airport, picked him up 11.55 and then we started this crazy road trip. And that guy's like beast mode. Like I would drive for a few hours and get sleepy. He'd go for a few hours, trade back and forth. Anyway, we got out to California. Coincidentally, the same weekend happens to be one of the best races, like in my opinion, drag races, almost of the whole year for the West Coast. So Bakersfield, California is a fantastic track. The prep is good. Just, it's good. The shutdown's good. It's a great track. Um, and they hold really good events there. So. This weekend was, you know, the weather's cooler right now, but the sun still comes out, like maybe the best time of the year for this race. So 
Bakersfield import face-off was this weekend, <clears throat> and I drove my car down, uh, gave that to my dad, then linked up with my friend from Fame Racing. Now, he doesn't really need my help. He's like a one-man show, built that whole car himself, tunes that car himself. I mean, truly, he's put his time and work in to learn what it takes to be a driver, a tuner, and a mechanic of these cars. I was just there for moral support. So, this is where the story gets crazy. I know this is a little bit long. Stay with me. We get there, and I assumed that he was ready to go, but we, he had shipped his turbo off to be fixed after the last turbo. It had a little, or last race, it had a little bit of issues with the turbo. The turbo company hadn't shipped it back yet. I guess they were missing a part, and they couldn't get it. The problem is, it's a very specific turbo, and they're like four thousand dollars. So you can't just get one anywhere. And now, by the time we realize that he couldn't get it, it's Friday afternoon. All the stores are about to close. We just figure that we're totally not going to get it. And this is where it gets even crazier. You guys might understand this, but this is like, this is like how amazing people are for real. So there's a lot of other race teams. Some of them have cars that are down right now that might be able to help us out. Um, I started messaging a bunch of people on Instagram just trying to see like if anybody could borrow us the same turbo for the weekend. Um, it's not that easy to find this turbo. Not everybody runs it. It's, it's the most expensive turbo for the class. Dude, luckily we reached out uh, to a guy named Gus from like the Jerry Built, Jerry Built team and um, he's like, yeah, I got you. Uh, I'll be up there in like a couple hours. I'll just try drop it off. And I was like, oh my gosh, that's amazing. So anyway, long story short, even if you're in competition and like you're against other teams, it's cool to compete and, and line up and try to win. But everything after that race and before that race, you should be friends. Like competition shouldn't be ugly in the background. It should be super cool. So, you know, like if, if you're going into competition, compete, I'm competitive. I get it. Um, but between rounds, if somebody needs help with something or they need a part and you can help them, even if you're going against them in the next race, help them out. It's karma. Like you're going to run your race anyway. They're going to run the race anyway, man. Life is better with good competition. So you never want to not help your competition. Um, I'm not saying give it away trade secrets or anything, but I am saying, man, if you can help them out, lend a help you can, even if they are your, man, fiercest competitor, help them out, help them out. It's just like a dope way to be. I can't say thanks enough to, to Gus, man. Like it's a really expensive turbo. Like I don't, I don't know if everybody would borrow us that turbo. So anyway, we got this turbo, we go to an event and, um, my friend from fame racing, Shannon was really, really hoping he's been trying for the last couple events to get the car to just make a good solid pass and he wanted to go 850 or faster. Dude, we knew the car had it in it. We pulled it off the trailer. He went and tacked it in and got up to the line. And uh, when he let that car go, man, I could hear it. It was ready. Um, 8.43 at 175 miles an hour. Dude, that car was trucking. Um, I'm gonna try to get a video clip. Like I said, I didn't video the rest of the weekend. Um, some of my friends are more private. I don't wanna film their stuff if they're not comfortable with that. So vlogging, you know, not everybody's comfortable with vlogging. So I'm gonna try to get a clip of his car making a hit. And uh, man, I just, the coolest thing to see your friends succeed and help people. You know, I was just down there to help him like anything I could, like whatever he needed to help him drive, pack, load the trailer, like anything, you know, like I'm just down to help. Um, so. Super big thanks to Jerry Bill and congratulations to Fame Racing. It's been like four years in the works, but that makes him at the top of the list for the fastest on the West Coast, like really, really close. Um, definitely in the like, I think in the actual California cars, it puts him in the top three. I'm not sure where he falls exactly. So anyway, that's basically what happened. And uh, now I'm back in Austin and uh, I'm gonna help out Yari with his little project. I'll show you that next.
885. Okay, so while I was gone in California, Yari got his coilovers, which we ordered a few days ago. Oh, like a week ago now. And uh, they're in this box. It's pretty exciting. He's been uh, sort of rubbing on his tires for a week or two because the other suspension wasn't stiff enough to keep it up. So we're really hoping now that we throw these on and it will just go down the road nice and uh, we won't have so many bumpy issues. He's in there taking the rear ones out now. We're gonna hurry and throw these things on. It's really nice and hot in here. <laughs> it's actually nice because it was really cold in California this week. Really? Yeah, it was cold pretty much the whole time. I feel like when you watch California on TV, like you never know what it, the weather really feels like. Yeah, totally. The track day was probably like the warmest, and then the rest of the week was just kind of just cold enough to be like cold. <laughs> adjustable they got a damper adjuster and their ride height and uh, their ride height adjustable here and preload adjustable here so should be pretty good we got the stock rears out so now we can put the uh, new ones in new parts are so good mm -hmm. So much better than used ones. True. We need to do a comparison quick. Yeah, let's not let's not do a comparison. Okay, I'm gonna give you a one second look. Garbage. Not not gonna not gonna spend too much time looking at those. <laughs> We're excited to have new things. <clears throat> uh, should I do the top first or the bottom? It might be easier to do the top. So you have to get it like in the slot and then I can hold it. Can it twist or something? Yeah, I can twist. It can totally move however you like it. Yeah, the plate's too big. Just wiggle. It's not too big. Okay, ready? He's going in to tighten these upper two bolts right here, but uh, we're wondering if this plate is almost too big to fit in the area. So we're just hoping that it goes. Okay, we got the backs on, so now we're gonna put the fronts in real quick. really believe like what a uh, affordable deal these are these days <laughs> compared to how they used to be like always like thousand dollars eight hundred dollars that's how much the like name brand ones are going for i know but i think like at this point they've adopted a lot of the technology into the even cheaper ones yeah. i mean maybe they won't last as long maybe the quality control is not there but i think they're still gonna be pretty good it's not a daily driver or really. yeah you don't put very many miles on it anyway so i guess we'll have to let people know how they do once we get them on I need to take these brake lines off. Are they connected? Yes, they are. Uh, they might have a, a bolt that connects them. Hey, hey, there that one goes. More stuff for the scrap bin. Yeah, so I need to go make a run soon. All right. Grab the new one. I'm like super curious about like the the dampening or whatever. Cause this is the first time I've ever seen a cheap brand of coilovers 
They look like they fit, right? With damping. Yeah, hey, does it go in? If you really want to know, pull the shock back out and pull the knuckle or the lower joint thing and uh, s make sure they fit first off the car. Cool. I mean, the fitment's pretty good. We only had a little issue on the back so far. All right, you go ahead and stick that in there. I was gonna show you guys. So on this uh, on this rear one, it like hits the body just a little bit on the inside corner and this upper plate doesn't sit dead flat against the body. There's a little bit of a gap just like right up there. So you can kind of, um, that's hard to tell, but there's just a little bit of a gap. And I kind of wonder if it's just like the undercoating keeping it off. We tried beating it in with a hammer. It didn't really want to go. So we're hoping it will just settle in. Uh, if it doesn't in a day or two, we may pull them back out and then just clearance. Uh, the upper hat just a little, but I'm not really complaining for the price. It's pretty good. Go ahead and tighten the lower collar and then lock the upper for now and we'll adjust them later. And what's the difference now that between these shocks and the old shocks? Like I have ride height adjustment before, but now do I have, you said dampening or what's the other adjustment that they have now? With these, these <clears throat> yeah, things? so this lower collar allows you to adjust your ride height without changing the amount that this collar right here puts load on the spring. So you can preload your spring to have the car ride how you want it mm -hmm. and then also adjust your ride height without affecting your preload. So it can ride one way and ride low or high without messing up the way it rides. Perfect. And then in the top, that little adjuster that's on the actual shock itself, that adjuster adjusts the dampening on the actual shock valving itself. Oh, okay. So you can adjust the dampening on the shock, you can adjust ride height and preload separately, which is cool. That's normally something that was only found in the real expensive ones. This is the first time I've ever seen it in a, you know, affordable. Price. You're gonna keep it like that, just call it. Uh, we'll just call it affordable, uh, affordable <laughs> coilover. You can find the prices yourself. But... You can find, uh, find them on the wonderful interwebs. So, yeah. Oh man, I can't wait to see if it rides good. I'm really excited. Not that I don't like sharing all the rubber from your tire with this fender here, but uh, eventually we're not going to have much tire left. I say it's a template I want to cut out. Yeah. What you're going to do, fender flares? Yes. You're brave. From, from, from here to oh, here, it just hurts me thinking about cutting the body. Oh. Man, that thing is high. Look at the wheel gap, though. It's still probably lower than stock, though. It is probably still lower in stock, but we'll put it down. Yeah. Just see how it rides so we know which way to adjust it. Alright man, you know see you tomorrow.